Gina. And today I'm gonna to show you all how easy it is to make delicious, healthy flounder and beautiful asparagus. This recipe is amazing. It's easy to make. You're not gonna feel heavy and weight down after you eat this recipe. Here are the lovely ingredients you're gonna need. First thing you will need would be some flounder. Now I highly suggest if you're not a fan of flounder, just pick which kind of fish you would love. I have washed off my flounder using salt, cold water, and a little bit of lemon juice. And then we've pat it dry with a paper towel. Gonna need a couple of spices so we can make this thing taste good. So right here in this ramekin, I have onion and garlic powder. We have some sea salt. Now, you can choose to use the sea salt or just omit it, okay? You can also use a salt substitute if that's what you choose. Right here we have Old Bay seasoning, a great seasoning for seafood. Really interesting, healthy ingredient here is turmeric. Turmeric is gonna give a great color and beautiful flavor and it has health properties. We're gonna be using dried parsley flakes, black pepper. For our asparagus, we will be using some Parmesan cheese. And this Parmesan cheese is dairy free, it's vegan, and it's lactose free. You're gonna need some country crock plant butter. Okay, this is a plant butter. It's much healthier than the other butters. We do have some lemon, and we got some gorgeous asparagus. Make sure your hands are clean. Let's get started with this fun recipe, Gina Young style. Do you love asparagus, and you wondered how to make them, how to make them delicious? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you a quick, simple, easy way. Now, a lot of times when I make asparagus, we're not gonna do it today. A lot of times I'll use a splash of white wine. It really brightens it up. So this recipe is for those that say, I don't want the wine in this recipe, okay? But it's for everybody else as well. So now, when you have an asparagus, there's a woodsy in, okay? And that's this part right here, literally from here to here. It, it, it's really, really fibrous. And it's something that you really don't wanna bite down into. Always when you bring your vegetables home, you know what I like to say? I like to say wash them off. You never know who's handled them. You gotta wash off those nasty pesticides. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut that woodsy end off. So let's do it just like so together. I hope y'all are having a great day today. Somebody out there, let me know, do you love asparagus like we do here at the Young's house? We love, love, love asparagus. Now there's gonna be some sticklers out there. They're gonna say, don't throw this away. Some people like to say, save it and put it into a stock. I don't wanna put mines into a stock, but if you would like to do that, you would cut yours into small pieces, throw it into the freezer, and then when you're ready to make a stock, you could proceed with throwing the asparagus into the stock. I discard of that woodsy in, okay? So now I have my asparagus. Perfect, we've washed them off. And in this pan here, you can literally see that I have some avocado oil is what we're using today. It's a much healthier oil, okay? So what we're gonna do, you can use olive oil as well. Get that pan nice and hot. My pan is hot. Let's go ahead and put your asparagus all in going the same way. You don't want some of this in, you know, going this way. Here's what we want. We want them all going in the same direction so that it looks beautiful when it cooks up and it's going to be gorgeous when it's done cooking so now i don't want to season it right now season it right now is a little too early what's going to naturally happen when the asparagus begin to cook is uh, naturally um, it's going to release some water okay once that little bit of water is released of course it'll evaporate in that hot pan and then very quickly after that, you'll begin to see a beautiful sear onto the asparagus. Once your asparagus are at least 70% cooked, then we can go in and season it. And we're gonna season these asparagus with salt, pepper, garlic and onion powder. We're gonna use some butter and some lemon. I decided to use turmeric for this beautiful flounder today. We will be cooking our flounder in the oven on 375 degrees until the fish is done. Turmeric has great health properties, I cannot stress it enough, and it gives you a really interesting taste. 
Okay, so now when you're working with it, just use a little bit. Believe it or not, a little bit goes a long way. Look at that, my goodness, it's gorgeous. You bet it is. Just like so, we've seasoned with our turmeric, and then we're gonna go in with other seasonings. Now, we're gonna use some onion and garlic powder. This ramekin has onion and garlic powder in it. This is the onion powder. Okay, and then we're gonna go in with the garlic powder just like so. I hope y'all are having a great day today if I haven't said that. I, I feel like I already said it, but there's nothing wrong with saying it again. Okay, so now I decided to use a sea salt. If you use a uh, salt substitute, that's absolutely fine. If you don't wanna use salt, that's fine as well. And you can see I'm really barely using the salt because your loved ones can put salt onto it after it comes out of the oven. Okay, so now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put dry parsley flakes. Look how pretty. Look how pretty it made it look. Now this recipe, your kids, you know how they're, everybody out there has a kid that's a stickler. They claim they don't like fish. This recipe is gonna turn them out. They're gonna love it. Their taste buds gonna have a party when they taste this fish. Now, let's just say you didn't wanna cook yours in the oven and you said, well, Gina, I wanna try to cook mine's on the stove. How would I do it? Well, you would put a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil into your pan, just a little tiny bit, about a tablespoon, and you would do what they call pan sear. And you'll start to see a beautiful golden brown ring towards the bottom. That'll be your indication when it's time to flip it over and it doesn't cook long at all. At the last minute, you're gonna put one tad, uh, one pad of butter in there, squeeze some fresh lemon on it, and you have pan seared flounder. Okay, so now I wanna put some black pepper on. Oh, oh, oh yeah, look at that. Each seasoning makes it look even more beautiful and gives it even more flavor. We're gonna finally go in with the Old Bay seasoning. It's not just for seafood. All right, beautiful. And then I wanna slice up some lemon. So we'll set that aside just for the time being. And I wanna slice a nice slice of lemon for each piece of fish. Okay, take the seeds out if you like. But if you don't want to, you, you don't have to. You can take it out as the fish is done and then you can discard of the seeds. Look at that. Now, what's gonna happen is the lemon is gonna let off beautiful flavor onto your fish and there's nothing wrong, there is nothing wrong with squeezing extra lemon onto your fish after it comes out of the oven. So now we're gonna put just a little bit of this plant-based butter. This um, plant-based butter is beautiful. It's delicious and it tastes just like any butter that you've had before. It's just as good. Okay, so now each piece of fish gets a nice pat of butter and when the butter melts, it's gonna definitely go underneath the fish and season it just like so. I have my oven preheated 375 degrees and when it's done, I'm gonna plate everything up. You're gonna get that first bite. Here's what I love about the flounder. The flounder is mild, it's flaky, it has somewhat of a sweet taste to it, and it's not really fishy. Here at Gina's house, we absolutely love fish that's not too fishy. That's one of those fish. I hear a lot of people telling me, I wanna cook fish, but I need to cook it outside because I don't want my house to smell up, right? So there are two fish that I know for a fact that doesn't have that smell. And the number one one is orange ruffy and this flounder. It smells gorgeous. And it's almost done. Doesn't take hardly any time for this recipe. Now, let's look at our asparagus. They are beginning to look beautiful. And I just like to go in with a fork, you know, or even this tong like I'm doing here. And what's happening, I don't know if the camera's literally getting what I'm doing but I'm turning them. And, and let's take a look at that. See that? That is what I'm actually looking for. And it'll happen, don't rush it. All right, now's the perfect time. These asparagus are cooked about 75%. I'm seasoning right now with onion and garlic powder. Yes, make sure you don't season it too early. This is just onion and garlic powder. It's gonna give a great flavor. All right, just one pinch of sea salt and that's it. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. 
All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of parsley flakes on there just to make everything pretty. All right, we're gonna let that cook. And then um, towards the end of the cooking process, since we are not using a white wine, I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of lemon juice in there. And it's gonna really bring this whole dish together. And two tads of the plant-based butter and this vegan, dairy-free, soy-free Parmesan cheese as a finishing touch. And it really makes for an amazing asparagus that was so easy to make. People are gonna think you slaved in the kitchen all day making this dinner and it only took less than a half an hour. Asparagus are nice and tender. If you're that person that's not sure when asparagus would be done, well, guess what I, I, I'd like to tell you all to do? Taste one like I did. Because off camera, I literally went in, tasted one, and I was happy. It was nice and tender, but it wasn't soggy. And that's what you're looking for. Now what I like to do is, as a finishing touch, just to brighten it up and make it match perfect with our flounder. The flounder's done, by the way. Let's take a little squeeze of lemon juice, or if you wanna use that white wine, you can. Look at that, oh my goodness. There's a seed in there, we're gonna fish it out. Everybody relax, <laughs> relax. All right, we got it. So now, just like so, I like to put the Parmesan on, just like this, my family goes nuts over this quick and simple recipe that you're gonna be able to make in a cinch, and it was cost effective. Half an hour to make, cost effective, and it tastes delicious. Listen here, if y'all enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Tell your family and friends, and everyone you know, tell the whole world about what Gina is doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. When I come back, it'll be plated up. You're gonna get that first bite. Take a look at it, everybody. Look how beautiful. And you're gonna really love the taste from the turmeric and the little bit of yellow that it gives to our fish. Let me do like this so you can see. Look how beautiful and healthy. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pray over this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gorgeous meal today. Lord, we thank you for your love time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts and make you our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for the roof over our head, the food, the love, the peace and the joy you bring us every day. Amen. Take a look at it, everybody. Just one more look. Oh, wait. Amen. Let's have lunch. Amen. Oh, I'm going in. That's so flaky. I'm going to bring this close up to the camera so you can see the lovely spice. Can you all see that color? That's all spice. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. You can not tell me nothing right now. Mm. Mm -hmm. This one right here, that's for me. I don't know about you all, but when I eat asparagus, I just do it like this, y'all. Use a fork if you want. Mm. Make you some. God bless you. Have a great night. Mm.